Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another installment of the Would I Repurchase This series. So this was originally started by Dolly Mama, I believe. Um, I'll have her information linked down below. I've done about four of these already, but it's been like 11 months since I filmed one of these and I wanna start doing these more regularly again and like along with tags and stuff. So the premise of this is 10 random palettes from my collection. My husband helps me pick these out. And I say, would I rebuy these? Some of these I might've gotten in PR, some of them I bought myself. And I just think now that I've had them for a while, would I spend my money on them again? So and I have looked at all of these, but I haven't actually processed what I think about them. So really excited to see how this one goes. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Colin. I'm a non-binary Latinx scientist and lover of makeup with a definite soft spot for indie makeup and high-end makeup, which I think there is both of here today. And I tend to take a pretty analytical approach to the content I make, be it reviewing a new product or talking about something I already know and love. And I have new videos every week, so I'd really love to have you subscribe. Okay, so like I said, I have 10 palettes here in front of me. I will link all of them down below with affiliate links if they're still out there available in case you're interested. This is not a way of pressuring you to say you should go buy these, but if it's something you've been wanting and I talk about it here, I will have a link down below. And if you ever do use those, I greatly appreciate it. It helps a lot. I don't earn a ton of money from them or YouTube itself and any little bit helps support the channel. So thank you if you do use those. So the first palette I have in my stack is one that I did get in PR and I think it's actually discontinued, which makes me really sad. So I couldn't buy it, but I do. I love this and I would happily buy it myself if I lost it. And it is the Nomad Hudson Valley palette. This was their fall palette, not this last year, but the year before. And I think it got discontinued at the end of last year, but I love this one. And if it was still available and like I lost this, I would buy it immediately. This is my perfect fall palette. So one, it makes me homesick. I'm, well, I'm not from the Northeast originally, but I spent most of, a lot of my adult life living there, currently living in Seattle and want to move back. And this is just, so, and this, this is just the perfect fall palette and the perfect like Northeast New England palette. So the Hudson Valley is just North of New York City. I lived in Brooklyn. I also lived in New England for a while, and it's not your typical fall palette. So most are just like these tones here. I've said this, I'm a broken record when it comes to this palette. These are like your fall leaf colors that everyone uses, but the fact that they did these earthy tones and these mossy tones and the neutrals just makes it perfect. So you have the rocks and the dirt and the lichen and all the other aspects of fall in the Northeast. I love this, I love Nomad Cosmetics. I do have a discount code with them, it's just, it's bones and it is a non-affiliated code, so it just saves you money. I don't earn any commission, um, but really love this. Uh, I hope they do something. I do. I hope they do like a sequel at some point. Okay, so the next palette is one that I bought, and it is the Trixie Cosmetics Nighttime Realness Palette. So I have most of their palettes. I don't have. They have a couple other small ones or odd shaped ones like quads and stuff. I don't have those. This is the only smaller palette from them I have. And I really like this. I'm not a monochromatic palette person though. So I like that I have these blues. I really like reviewing Trixie Cosmetics because I have all of them so I can kind of like gauge what the formula is like. I think this is a good formula. The colors are really pretty. And then there are some like cool neutrals so that you don't have to do a blue look, but I have lots of blues because blue is my favorite color next to green. I have a lot of blue, so I don't know if I would repurchase this. Um, like if I lost this and had to rebuy it, I don't think I would rebuy it. I don't regret having it and I don't want to get rid of it, but I wouldn't repurchase it just because I have so many blues um, and I just don't grab from monochromatic blue very often, but I do think this is a really good palette and I don't regret buying it. So it's like in that weird spot of like, I like it, I'm not getting rid of it, but I don't need, I wouldn't need to rebuy it if I lost it. Like some of the other ones from her, I I would definitely repurchase some of the other palettes. I think this one I wouldn't. And it's just because I don't grab for monochromatic blues very often. So, but it is a really pretty palette and I do have a video on this. I really like this one. 
I think also because it doesn't match the rest, if it was the same form factor, I probably might. <laughs> but because it's little and doesn't match the rest, it doesn't fit with the rest in my collection, like where I keep them, so that also kind of bothers me. The next palette is going to be uh, one, another one that you cannot buy anymore. At least I don't think you can buy the Nomad one, but I know you can't buy this one anymore. But I would definitely rebuy this, and this is the NARS Climax palette. This was my white whale for a while. I really wanted it. And then I happened to find it still in stock somewhere and I bought it and I have zero regrets. This has been one of my favorite palettes of the last few years. I grab it all the time. I haven't in the last couple months. I should use it soon. Um, but it's historically been one of my favorite palettes. I think this is, I've swatched some of their other palettes not bought, and not bought them because they didn't feel like this one. This one is just their best formula that I've experienced. The color story is like perfect and compact. I feel like nine pans, smaller than nine pans isn't something I love, but nine pans, if done right, is a great selection. And I like that you have a green, you have depth, but it's like interesting because it's like a dark plummy shade. If you've got a couple lighter tones, like a really light tone and a mid, uh, like more mid-tone shade, the shimmers in this are beautiful. You've got a satin, uh, taupe shade. You've got this really beautiful slate blue. If I somehow lost this and I was able to rebuy it, I would 100% repurchase this. I think they should make it permanent and I think they should like expand on this and do more nine pans like this because this was so popular and everything else from them just looks like mm, like not as good quality and is like kind of generically brown, which is fine. I like a neutral, but like this is actually interesting and I feel like they really need to like Whoever made this, they need to have them make some more stuff. <laughs> okay, so the next palette is going to be another one that I purchased, and this is from Odinzai. This is their Jewels and Gems palette. This one came out the same, there are two palettes that came out in this collection last spring, and I bought both of them, and I thought I would prefer the other one because it's greens, but it's a little too monochromatically green, and so I actually prefer this one. I really love this palette. I would repurchase this. You've got a nice collection of purpley tones. You've got some like purpley plum tones. You've got some blues, but like interesting blues because this one is like a desaturated lighter blue. And then you've got more of a blue purple. You've got a couple mauve tones. You do have this like stony green kind of shade. I just think this is a one of their best palettes formula wise and color story wise. And I think this deserved more hype than it got. I think this was underhyped. I think a lot of, I saw a lot of people say that they thought that the packaging was ugly and they wouldn't buy it for that. I don't get that. Hi Bean, <laughs> but I really love this. I would happily rebuy this if I lost it. I don't know if I would rebuy the green one. I'll have to include that in a future one, but I would repurchase this one. Okay, the next one is a neutral palette and it is the Viseart Cashmere palette. So I did not buy this when it came out. I bought this last year. I really like the Viseart formula. They have one of my favorite matte formulas and I really like their shimmers. They're not as sparkly and interesting as some other brands, even in this list, and you'll see in a minute. But I think for day-to-day -day looks, their formula is reliable. It's beautiful. I have no complaints and this, and they do have some sparkly shadows. But this is just a really wonderful neutral palette. I think this is one of their best sellers and I see why. So you only have four mattes. So you have a really pale shade that I'm never, I can use for an inner corner highlight, but that's about it. And then you've got a mauve shade, high bean, <laughs> and a brown. So you can either go kind of mauve tone or brown, and then you've got a charcoal shade to deepen it up. If you're lighter than me, you can use this as like maybe a transition or set your Base. and then the shimmers all correspond so you've got some browns you've got a taupe you've got some more purpley mauves it's just like an all-around standout neutral palette and I would repurchase this if I like lost this or hit pan on a bunch of them I would definitely buy this again I think this is a really beautiful palette and I really love the packaging I think sometimes their packages like they did the cashmere charmeuse which is like the packaging's pretty, but it's like an imprint, so it's like an embossing and all one color. Hi, Bean. <laughs> this as like this beautiful imprint, and I just, I really love it. 
I have zero regrets buying this, even way after the hype. And uh, we'll continue to love this. I think it's my husband just got home from being out all day and she was very excited, but now instead of laying in the bed with him, she's laying there. <laughs> okay, so the next palette is one of my few Sigma palettes. I have three palettes from Sigma Cosmetics and this is the Cinderella palette. I did buy this one um, and I did do a giveaway when I bought this and did a review. Um, and I used a random number generator and a friend from high school got it, which was um, like a funny coincidence. But I do really like this palette. I do really like the color story. I like Sigma's eyeshadows. I like their brushes too. I don't like a double-ended brush, which is why I leave them in here instead of putting them with my actual brushes. But I think this is a really pretty color story. Um, the mattes are pigmented. I feel like the sense this because I got the, the the Beauty and the Beast palette. That one I got in a giveaway from them. Um, that one is even more pigmented than this. But while I like this palette a lot and I do like their formula, I don't think I would repurchase this. I can dupe basically every matte in here. The, say, like the more sagey green, the neutrals, the blue, the purples. And I think these are really beautiful. I really love this blue shimmer. This purple shimmer with the sparkle is really pretty. The neutral shimmers are nice. Um, I didn't love the, these two are a little more sheer. I should do a revisiting video on this because I haven't used it in a while, but I could easily dupe this. And I tend to use other palettes that have these colors more than this. And because I haven't used this in a while, I don't think I would repurchase this. I will maybe do a revisiting video soon. If you want to see that, let me know, because I think you can still buy this. And I might change my mind, but as of right now, I don't think I would repurchase this. Yeah, especially at full price, maybe at a, maybe on sale. I do really like their eyeshadow formula and their products in general. They have really good um, formulas at a pretty like reliably okay priced and then they do sales pretty regularly. So like Sigma is high, I think really underrated. Okay, and so the next palette is going to be one of my more expensive palettes and it is my Lisa Eldridge Cinnabar palette. I have three of her palettes. I got two of them at the end of last year and then I bought Sorcery, I think when it came out. Um, I, shortly after it came out, I really love this. I really love her formula and even though this is really boring and neutral, I would repurchase this. I want the other palettes from her. I need Myth. I'm, what is it? Uh, myth, there's Myth and then there's one that I can't remember the name of right now. That's a little more pink leaning. That one I don't know if I'd pay full price for and I didn't pay full price for this either. I bought it from someone who got it in like a bundle and didn't want it. So I got it at like a 30%, like 25, 30% discount, but after using it, I would repurchase this. Um, and that might be controversial to say, because I think a lot of people were, even my friend Kelly was kind of disappointed in this. So you've got basically my perfect warm transition shade. I've got a really nice, more rusty colored shade, and then a nice charcoal-y kind of shade to go with them. So you can go neutral or warm. And then there's a rose gold, a copper, and then a topper shade. I know a lot of people were not happy about the top coat shades in her palettes, but I like them. They don't really do too much. They do add a little bit of sparkle to the, the regular shimmers. I think where they shine the best is wearing them just over matte, so you have that little bit of soft twinkle, which most toppers do, and that's what I use them for. I think people expect them to basically be an iridescent shimmer from Terra Moons or Cleona or a Pat McGrath, like, astral shade and they're just not most top top coat topper shades are not that and I don't always want that so I like having the subtle sparkle and the intense sparkle so I really love this and really happy I got a discount but I really want the rest of her palettes I'm hoping she hinted that she'll be coming out with more next month and I will definitely be buying some yeah I'll definitely buy some <laughs> because I am not lucky enough to be on her PR list. <laughs> um, okay, so the next palette is going to be one of my two from ABH. So this is the Rose Metals palette. And I really love this and I would 
probably repurchase this. I did buy this with a gift card, so I didn't actually spend my own money on it. I had a birthday gift card and I bought this and something else. And I wouldn't pay like the $60 price tag for this, but I would repurchase this if I had another gift card or if it was on sale, because I really like this. This is a really good fall color story for me. It works really well with my undertone. There's a lot of green in the shimmers. Um, you've got some pretty neutrals. You've got, yeah, it's just a really beautiful palette. I think this one is underrated color story wise, and I, I really love this. So I, Ha I don't, I really like the formula. I think they're, they're pigmented. They blend well. The shimmers are really pretty. Um, I don't love the formula enough that I would buy something just instantly, but, and none of their other palettes since this have interested me, but I really like this one and I don't regret having it. But the repurchase, would I repurchase? I would say on a sale, probably full price now. Okay. So I've got two palettes left. The next one is another more expensive palette and it is the Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. So I bought this when it came out and I do really like this. I think it's a nice best of Natasha Denona. So you've got some, you've got a little bit of every formula. You've got a multi-chrome, quote unquote. You've got some more sparkly shimmers. You've got some more smooth shimmers like Serenity. You've got warm tones, you've got cool tones, you've got cream to powder. I really like Natasha Denona's formulas, and I really like this palette. I wouldn't rebuy this at full price, but on a sale, I definitely would rebuy this. I like that they're magnetic, and now that I have them labeled, I can mix them around, not have to worry about remembering where they go, because they need to go back to their home eventually. <laughs> I, unless I depot them and get rid of all of the actual palettes, they need to live there, unless I'm using them in a build-your-own palette. Um, there's some shades in here I don't really use that often, like Risk and Instinct, but I really like a lot of these. I actually grab it most for the Serenity shade, which is a more satin. Um, and I think this is a really good palette if you are interested in trying Natasha Denona, but you don't know her formula as well. I think this gives you a mix of all of her formulas, warm coons, cool tones, like you get a little bit of everything. So it's a really good like introductory palette. If you have everything, it's a little redundant, but still really pretty. So. I would rebuy it, but again, probably on sale. I wouldn't pay full price again. There's a few of her palettes, like the Yuka palette I would pay full price for to buy again, and maybe the My Dream, or not My Dream, that's this one. <laughs> the I Need a Nude, I would probably pay full price for again. This is not one I would pay full price for, but I would rebuy. Okay, and then my last palette here is one I would definitely repurchase even full price, and it is the Ismea Industrial Palette. I have all three of their palettes, and I know a lot of people have issues with this brand, although when this is their first launch, how could you not be expecting the rest of the things? But <laughs> that's a tangent for a different video. I love this. I know some people had issues with hard pan or muddy looks. I haven't had that. I think it's a very painterly formula. Everything layers and melts together really nicely. And these are the kind of tones that I wear on a pretty regular basis. Um, you've got like a nice copper, you've got a really beautiful brown that I, I wear as an, a one and done pretty regularly. You've got the putty shades, which are really great. Um, some people said that this one isn't blue enough for them, but on my olive undertone, this definitely looks blue and this definitely looks black. So like, works for me. <laughs> if you are lighter than me and don't have an olive undertone, they might look the same. Um, and I really love the like slightly green, bronzy, brown shades that are in this. It's murky. This is grungy. A lot of people use the word grungy, <laughs> and I've ranted about this many times, to lit to talk about anything that's like not a mid-tone brown. I've seen people call like this grungy. I've seen people call a lot of things grungy. That's like, it's, I've seen, a fair number of people refer to shades that are like my transition shade as a grungy shade because it's darker than their skin tone. But this is grungy. Like the theme is grungy, the color story is grungy, the textures in here are grungy. This is sooty, grungy. Like think 90s grunge, like German club grunge. Like this is grunge and I love it. Um, so would happily this. I mean, I wouldn't happily because I wouldn't want to be at $100 again, but 
I would repurchase this. Okay. Okay, so that is all 10 palettes. Let me know what you think. There's, I'm pretty happy that there's two that I wouldn't and a couple that I might on a sale, but the rest I would happily repurchase. And I think that, that that's good. That's what I want. I want this to be, you know, confirming that I've made the right choices with my so, purchases. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you think of the palettes, what you think of my decisions. I like to hear your pins. I like to talk to you all in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in my next video.